Welcome to this Tutor to You topic video that looks at the Lesotho Highlands Water Project, which is an example of a large scale water transfer scheme. This is part of Paper 2, Unit C, The Challenge of Resource Management. Lesotho is an LIC and is a landlocked country which is entirely surrounded by South Africa. The Lesotho's Highlands Water Project is an example of a large-scale water transfer scheme taking water from Lesotho to South Africa. It is the largest water transfer scheme in Africa, taking 30 years to complete. Lesotho is a mountainous country that receives a high level of precipitation and has a low population of just 2.3 million people. Therefore, it has a water surplus whereas South Africa has a population of 60.4 million and uneven rainfall, so it has a water deficit, with the west and south being particularly dry. 200 kilometres of tunnels divert 40% of the water in the Sengru River Basin in the Sutu into the Vaal River system in South Africa, and then on to where it is needed most in the country. 2,000 million cubic metres of water is transferred every year. Lesotho is one of the world's poorest countries and it relies on this money from selling water to South Africa. It actually makes up 75% of the country's income. Let's have a quick look at the main features of the scheme. Construction started in 1984 with the Katsi Dam, which is pictured on the screen, and the Mahale Dam, which were completed in 1998 and 2002, storing and transferring water to the Mahale Reservoir. A 32km tunnel then transfers water to South Africa's Mueller plant to generate hydroelectric power. The second phase of the project involved the construction of the Polyhali Dam, which can hold 2.2 billion cubic metres of water and has a 38km transfer tunnel. Later phases of the project included the Saliki Dam, built at the confluence of the Saliki and Senku rivers, with a storage capacity of 2,223 million cubic metres, and a pumping station, as well as the Nihali Dam, and another pumping station 40 kilometres downstream. Let's have a look at the benefits of the Highlands Water Project, starting off with the benefits for Lesotho. The project provides Lesotho with 75% of its income, boosting the economy and improving quality of life in the country. There's also been an impact on water supply. Income from the scheme has been spent on increasing water security in Lesotho. 90% of the population in Masuru, which is the capital city, now has access to water. Money has also been spent on improving sanitation systems, increasing the proportion of the population with adequate sanitation from 15% to 20%, although this is still fairly low, but it has reduced the risk of waterborne diseases. The dams also generate hydroelectric power, which increases energy security in the country and will help further economic development. The project has taken 30 years to complete and has provided thousands of jobs during construction, with further jobs created with operation and maintenance. And finally, there have been infrastructure improvements. The project has included access roads and communication networks, which benefit local people, but they may also encourage further investment into the country in the future. So how has South Africa benefited? Well, certainly the water security has increased. It addresses the issue of uneven and unreliable rainfall distribution and frequent drought events, and it ensures that there's enough water for agriculture and for industrial uses, as well as for domestic. And it does mean that the 10% of the population who were without access to safe water now have it. It also has seen economic impacts. The increased water security means that food production and industrial output has increased, which has encouraged economic growth. And finally, there has been some ecosystem restoration. The Vaal River Reservoir, for example, was heavily polluted by raw sewage and toxic chemical runoff from manufacturing and from gold mining. And this has had a huge impact on marine ecosystems. However, the influx of fresh water into this system has meant that the acid levels in the water have been reduced and it's meant that the balance has been restored. But 
As with any project of this scale, there are plenty of disadvantages. So let's have a look at the drawbacks for Lesotho. Firstly, we've seen a big displacement of local population. The initial phase of construction meant that 30,000 people had to be moved away to make way for the flooding behind the Katse and the Mahali Dams and then the Polyhali Dam. This has destroyed 17 villages and it's reduced the land available for farming and for the residents of 71 other villages. There's also been ecosystem damage. The wetland ecosystem downstream that depends on the regular flooding has been destroyed due to less water reaching that part of the river basin. Corruption has also been an issue. Compensation money was set aside to those communities who have been displaced by the project to help them set up new lives and to buy new farmland. However, corruption has meant that a lot of this money has not gone where it was supposed to and the money that has been received has often been too little and too late. Temporary workers have also caused problems in the area. So many workers have moved into informal settlements around the construction sites where alcoholism has been a huge issue and the spread of HIV and AIDS has been rife. We also have the over-reliance on one income source. 75% of Lesotho's income comes from transferring water to South Africa and that makes it economically vulnerable. And finally, Lesotho has had to borrow huge sums of money to finance their part of the project. This debt will have to be paid back with interest, which reduces the amount of money available to spend on important services such as education and healthcare, which are vital in improving the quality of life for people in LICs. But there have also been some disadvantages for South Africa. The project has estimated to have cost around 4 billion US dollars and the South African government is likely to pass that cost on to consumers across the country. The increased water tariffs are much too high for the poorest people in South Africa so they will not be able to access safe water which increases water inequality across the country. Poor infrastructure is also an issue 40% of all water transferred is actually lost through leakage and this is linked to poor maintenance of pipes and tunnels. And our final disadvantage is the lack of water security. Although the project has increased access to a safe water supply for most people in the country, South Africa is still entirely reliant on another country for its water supply, meaning that it cannot have water security. This also means that there is a potential for conflict between the two countries in the future and Lesotho could restrict water access. That concludes this Tutor to You topic video focusing on the Lesotho Highlands Water Project. Thank you for watching.